to a much larger issue. Kingfisher, Winsome, Bhushan, Zoom developers, Sterling Biotech, several things that Ajay mentioned. The number of companies that have exploited the Indian banking system are growing. Why do Winsomes and Bhushans happen? Why are PSU banks more vulnerable? Is it because of corrupt officials or inefficient due diligence? Or is it simply because bank officials are too weak to arm twist their borrowers and take tough calls? To answer these tough questions, sir, we have uh, two actually ex-bankers, Devakar Gupta, former managing director and CFO of State Bank of India, and economist and former banker, Hasib Drabu. We join them in a minute on this big discussion of the day. All right, we have decided not to take the break because it's such a big discussion. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today, Mr. Gupta and Hasib. Hasib, uh, uh, I'll, I'll start with you simply because I see you as a little bit of an outsider and a little bit of an insider to the banking sector. Uh, the most obvious question first, uh, why is it that uh, public sector banks have suffered more than private sector banks in handling NPLs in this down cycle? I think it, if you look at it from a broader perspective, uh, it points to a governance deficit and a management deficit. I think the governance, the corporate governance in PSU banks is not as strong as it ought to be. Um, and the skill set that the management teams must have now in a kind of uh, a financial system that is evolving and the kind of size and scale of credit particularly in India, uh, the skill set doesn't really exist at that level. In terms of governance, I think the biggest issue is the separation of ownership and management. The government of India owns a large chunk of these banks ranging from 50% to 85-86% and a lot of people uh, are ex-official members on the board, be it the finance secretary or banking secretary and so on and so forth depending on the nature, size, class of the bank. And uh, there is definitely, uh, I emphasize the word definitely, involvement and interference at that level. Mm. Uh, board seats, board directors on these banks are favors dished out to people with political contacts. These are in some ways parking slots. So the ideal kind of a governance environment and in a new regulatory environment, because if you, rather if you see, mm. they have moved from a control regime to a regulatory regime, and one of the key players in that is the, uh, the board of directors. That is where the real problem starts and then subsequently okay. it becomes an operational issue and so on and so forth. Okay, so two big issues, political uh, uh, interference which he calls a governance issue as well as inability to do uh, as much due diligence, quality of uh, uh, diligence. Uh, well, uh, uh, Hasib, I must tell you that I've heard other views as well. Uh, there are people, NBFCs, who believe that uh, due diligence of State Bank of India is much better than, uh, you know, uh, uh, the quality of bankers in several private sector banks. But I'll keep that issue for the moment. Let me uh, come directly to the question that we are posing. Why do Bhushans happen? Why do Winsoms happen, Mr. Gupta? I think I would agree uh, with the opening remarks to Mr. Drabu. There is a governance deficit. And uh, that governance deficit is not because credit skills are lacking, because today in large advances you have adequate uh, due diligence from very competent people. I think it's really the fact that in uh, good times you underprice risk, you go overboard. In bad times you want to find a scapegoat. So, you know, if I were to uh, draw an analogy, uh, women in our country, for example, they are used to being lewd comments being passed against them, they are pinched, pushed, everything. Only once in a while there is outrage and then some guy gets lynched. Mm -hmm. I think what we are looking at today is frenzy. The reaction is not addressing the root cause of the problem. The root cause of the problem, and I have maintained that all along, is the fact that in the public sector space there is not adequate incentive for taking proactive decisions which can get, then get questioned later for bona fides. Mm -hmm. And therefore, a lot of this problem is happening by default because there is indecision. Okay, you don't want to be, you, you don't have the guts to be tough because uh, later on you may have a CDC or a CBI inquiry. Yeah, absolutely. Is that what you're absolutely. saying? I mean, that's what we are questioning about Bhushan. I have known Bhushan, uh, not as a direct controller, but I know it's a good company. I know there are buyers who are still today asking bankers not to pull the plug on Bhushan because they are willing to buy their entire uh, uh, production. Yeah. So, you know, th here is a company which has seen a downturn, which has not got iron ore, where uh, prices of uh, steel are depressed and where interest costs have gone up. 
Now, how do you really blame a company like that? And because it was good, bankers would obviously continue to support it. At some point of time, you have found that support was not sustainable, and now you are questioning the same bankers why they threw good money after bad money. I think forbearance is is the byword, unless there are clear malafides. Mm -hmm. I am not aware whether there are clear malafides in the case of Bhushan, or for that matter, even significant diversion. So, Mr. Gupta, how do you really decide how much should be led to a, lent to a company as working capital? Exactly. You know, when does a Bhushan become a kingfisher? Yeah. Sure. No, I think what happens is that when you are taking the credit decision, everything is fine. Mm -hmm. There are sensitivities around uh, numbers. Now, who knew that interest rates would go from 8 to 12? But that's a very, very critical factor. So if you had a certain EBITDA, if you had a certain coverage, all those uh, numbers are no longer sustainable. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't happen overnight. It happens in four years. So when the stress surfaces after six months or one year, what do bankers do? You know, bankers are not judges, they are not justice. Mm -hmm. They are also partners in, in the business. So if you are not supporting a business, you also lose 80% out of the 100% if the promoter is going to lose 20%. It's a very tough call. Mm -hmm. And that call, as long as we are leaving it open to question by agencies which may or may not understand financial uh, matters so well, you are actually telling the system, don't decide, be conservative, be safe, mm -hmm. because your personal goal is not the organization's goal. Okay. So, Mr. Dabu, uh, you know, the key question now is how can this malaise really be cured? I mean, what could, uh, what could the government do or what could the, uh, the, uh, the uh, banking secretary or, or the system do in order to remove the bad apples in the pack? Yeah, I mean, if you're removing, I think what your, your logical question is, if you're removing the control of the CVC and the mm -hmm. CBI uh, and the CAG, which Mr. Gupta says, you know, doesn't make you a tough banker, how do you hold the public sector banker accountable as well? No, uh, let me just get back one step and look at this whole issue of, I don't want to talk about Bhushan, but I'm talking about generally the whole lending pattern in the steel sector, for instance. It's not so much that, you know, uh, it's only an issue of uh, the controls or whatever. The fact is that if you take the average tenure of loans to the steel sector, term loans, it's as low as four to seven years. Now it's, it is a banker's issue that they do lend short mm. and they should all these loans should have been somewhere like 7 to 10 years or 10 mm -hmm. to 12 years they have been lending that are done for 7 years it's an five ALM years. issue and even before the project is completed the working capital is consumed mm. as a term loan which is when the problem starts so I think there is need to reassess what is the requirement of a growing industrial segment be it basic metal like steel or some others and take a realistic view now this may partially give, be driven by the fact of asset liability mismatches and stuff like that, but it remains a concern that the way that the lending has happened is not proper mm. and bankers should take a part of the blame, number one. Number two, when you're looking at it from a macroeconomic perspective, it's also a fact that the assets created by companies like Bush and others, the replacement value of those is much higher. Mm. So in some ways, if you look at it from a capital perspective, then the banker would probably change his perspective on it in terms of how much funding they should do. Third is the equity contribution. Now you must also understand that the entire Indian industrial sector is debt financed. You know, IDBI uh, has been a venture capitalist, private equity player, debt funder and everything. So in some ways, one needs to look at what is the contribution of the promoter to this. Mm. And not just in terms of debt equity, but debt to contribute to the equity. Mm. Because a lot of these companies, they are cyclical businesses, have made losses. Mm. So it's a little more complex than that. But having said that, obviously there has been distress in the system. And a lot of blame again is to be placed with the management, the audit committees and the, and the board of directors who don't declare these impaired assets in time. Mm. Today you are looking at stressed assets, which are way above what we have seen ever in the system. Okay. Uh, you are talking of 12 to 13 percent. Now, how does stress get managed? Okay. I think there is need to look at a process of detecting stress early. Yeah. What RBI has done through SMA one, SMA two. No, I take your. And then. Yeah, Haseeb, I, I yeah. take this point that, you know, I, actually you're continuing with what uh, uh, Mr. Gupta is saying, you know, m during a f a fine, good times, uh, a certain loan is uh, uh, above board, which it, it looks too aggressive in bad times. As well, what you're saying is that certain things in terms of uh, ALM mismatch and longer term loans uh, uh, for uh, certain industries uh, could be set right. But, okay, let me set aside that. I, I would assume bad loans would form three categories. 
One where you've been aggressive because of a particular time period and the times have gone bad. Other where, you know, the law changed the, because of an environmental issue or whatever. A good decision looked bad. But there is a third category which is outright daylight robbery. Where, you know, Zoom developers, for instance, or for that matter, now we don't know, the jury is still out on Winsome, 6,500 crores, and there's hardly any collateral. I understand the collateral is a few hundred crores. Uh, this appears to be contingent liabilities. LCs opened, which have suddenly, you know, uh, been uh, uh, encashed by a foreign bank. Now, I mean, someone has to hang Mr. Gupta. Uh, why is that not happening? No, Lata, I agree with you. I mean, the fact is that if there is wrongdoing, nobody should be spared. But no the one has been hanged so far, well, neither the Kingfishers or the Winsoms or the Zoom guys, nor the bankers. So that is the other aspect of uh, not wanting to take a decision. Mm -hmm. That is also part of the same malaise. That you let the law take its own course, if there is a stay from the court, you let the stay happen. If somebody can get it vacated, let it get vacated in due time. Uh, let me tell you, in the case of Kingfisher, because that is one of the most uh, discussed uh, cases, I don't think the consortium of bankers has ever dragged its feet on enforcing security. But the whole process, the legal process is so complex and it is so ridden with delays that it takes time. And somebody can very well use that process to, uh, to gain time. I think mm -hmm. that is what is happening in the case of Kingfisher. But again, I maintain, even for Kingfisher, there was a time when the brand was good. Mm -hmm. And each one of us wanted to fly Kingfisher. Mm -hmm. They had 23% market share at one point of time, which was higher than any other airline then. So, you know, it's, it's in hindsight very hard to say that here is a guy who has done daylight robbery. No, his model went bad and he made some bad decisions. Mm -hmm. And maybe bankers could have been more proactive. But uh, the, the situation so maybe, is that maybe right. that is the time to have sold off Kingfisher. So, I'm, I'm asking you now, if the, the law will definitely permit uh, uh, the bankers to say that I want somebody else to run Bhushan. Uh, yeah, it, it's my money that is stuck. Maybe we have to call it now and maybe not call later. I don't know. As a banker, what's... I think no, you, you can know. call it. You can call it. But then again, uh, that is something you have to be very careful of when you call. You see, here is a promoter who has got skin in the game. Mm. What you are saying is that he either has malefides or he's incompetent, so you'll put somebody in charge. Mm. Now, six months down the line, if that somebody comes and hands you over the key and says, well, sorry, I tried my best, but I couldn't run it, where are you? Mm. Okay. So, Kingfisher was not a bad, you know, there are, there are so many things that happened, which probably include the Deccan uh, merger and, mm. so, and, and other things. But the, a brand had been built, isn't it? And that brand was something people identified with at that time. If you say they were making losses or it was unsustainable, well, in industries like this, five years of losses is par for the course. Okay, I just have one question, Mr. Gupta. You know, now going ahead, a lot of bankers might fear the CBI. So, because of that, they'll be constantly looking over their shoulder. There'll be perhaps a stay on certain decisions. Given all of that, do you think there could be a slowdown or even a freeze in lending? You know, it is already there. It's been happening for two years and more. Do you think that's, it could that's work? That's what I've been saying again and again. Today, the fear of being questioned, including post-retirement, is so high mm -hmm. that people are almost not taking decisions at all. They say, somehow I'm not comfortable. That's it. Okay. On, 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 on uh, rationality, this account must be. Why do private sector banks do better? They hive off an asset. They take a 30% haircut. They go away. Why are asset sales happening to ARCs today? That is a safe route. Mm -hmm. You can't be questioned on that. They are all bad sales. Mm -hmm. They are not even true sales. Mm -hmm. They will come to haunt the banks back because 95% of the SR will come back. The ARC will say, I will be another it. chairman. So what do I care? So, and, and RBI is mind, mindful of it. That's mm -hmm. why all those changes yeah, in exactly. recent times have happened. But what I am saying is that all this is a response to not wanting to take a direct decision. Okay. I have known that in my personal experience. Uh, no, I, I still want to weigh out. And last question, because we have been told that we are out of time as well. Hasib, you know, is not the answer to hang someone. You're, you know, a, a, an, exemplif no, but, an yeah, exemplifying yeah, I, punishment I, I on the one hand. Issue. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, the, the thing is that don't look at, you know, somebody external coming in and doing it. You have to strengthen the process. The audit committee must do a review. You must introduce the concept of forensic audits, where you establish fraud, compliance, mm. complicity of officers. It has to be a, a governance process. It can't be that, you know, somebody then, uh, a loan goes bad and you had a credit appraisal officer. That's not the way to go about it. What we need to do is strengthen governance practices, and in specific, on mm -hmm. frauds like Kingfisher, REI Agro, Zoom, all this requires a forensic audit, where you establish the fraud. And once that is established, you will find two things. You will find a process failure, and you will have to find a personal interest. In both cases, then the board directors should be empowered enough to actually hang someone. 
it must not be a vindictive kind of a thing, you know, since the CBC or the CBI will land into your office and do this, they don't understand the whole process. The issue is internal, look at audit committees, empower the audit committees, have independent directors, do forensic audits, establish fraud, go to board of directors and hang them. Okay. Well, uh, that's true. Uh, out of time, but uh, what I understood that uh, from the winsome letter to the BSC yesterday, that the forensic audit which was done also did not throw up very clearly whether there was any uh, corrupt practice. It, uh, it, 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 it was a report which didn't point out to anything direct. Uh, so it looks like over there it was simply one covenant which uh, forced the banks uh, uh, to pay up some 6,000 crore in one go. So maybe stronger covenant, stronger diligence uh, is what is called for. Uh, the, the time we have is inadequate to discuss this, but this is an issue that uh, will keep coming back and we will keep coming back to bankers like you. Mr. Gupta, Hasib, thank you very much for joining us in this discussion.